Hi, my name is Mark and I teach economics. In this video, we're going to discuss the income effect and the substitution effect. The income effect is an easier idea. The substitution effect is a little bit more dicey, but they're actually related. And some people collapse the income effect under the umbrella of the substitution effect. So the income effect is clear. It's very easy. It says that when your discretionary income increases, you'll demand more of a particular good. Therefore, if I am making $20,000 a year and I get an increase to $40,000 a year, I will probably demand more gas. Maybe I'll go on a summer vacation. Maybe I'll take my family somewhere and I won't mind just burning gas and enjoying my life. Similarly, in the income effect, if there is a change in the price of gas, petroleum at the pump, then you're going to see an increase or decrease in demand for gas at the pump. And that would be represented by an outward shift in the demand curve. So in this particular time space tem temporal existence, gas is pushing $3 a gallon. If you're watching this video five years from now, you'll be laughing that it's either a crazy expensive because we've discovered some alternative energy and gas is pennies a gallon, or you'll, you'll think that it's really cheap because gas is now $12 a, a gallon. However, in this time, it's a pushing almost $3 a gallon. And this increase that we just experienced actually decreases my total discretionary income, or at least it feels that way. And so the demand curve will shift downward. It'll shift down to the left. And so that's the income effect. The income effect is a change in the demand for a particular good based on my discretionary income or the price as a component of my income. The substitution effect, in contrast, is about a choice between two goods. And it really deals with choice economics, budget economics. If you have a simple model of two goods, you have a budget constraint because we have obviously the problem of scarcity. I don't have $100 a week to spend on, let's say, books and ice cream. Let's say I have $20 a week. So I can buy maybe a few haagen cookies and cream, ice cream, or I can buy some books, get it off of Amazon or wherever local bookseller. This is Anna Green Gables by L. M. Montgomery. It's the whole series, all eight books, pretty good. So I have a choice between these two products and I have a budget constraint. If the price of one shifts, let's say the books go incredibly expensive because we have a paper shortage and they go to $100 a book, I'm probably going to be eating more ice cream. And conversely, if ice cream becomes insanely expensive because for some reason cows are protesting and they're not producing milk, I probably spend my leisure time and my discretionary income on consuming more books and enriching my mind rather than my, let's say, body. So that's the substitution effect. It deals with consumer choice and the price substitution between these two choices. You have a budget constraint and something called an indifference curve. And when one object becomes more expensive in relation to the other, this whole idea shifts. You're going to consume more of one and less of the other. And again, in economics, it's often relative. I'm going to show you how to calculate the income effect and the substitution effect and how to carve each component out of the total effect. So let's first draw the y-axis, y to the sky, and the x-axis. This is a good book, Interest in Prices by Knud Vixell, classic. So on the y-axis, we can put books on the X, ice cream. And let's draw this curve here. 
This will be our budget constraint. We'll call it B1 because everybody doesn't have unlimited budget. And in this simple world, this, this abstraction, we have two goods. And let's say this is 12, that's 12 units, not a price. And over here is 12, that's 12 units of books and ice cream. And let's draw our indifference curve. I know all this terminology, what is an indifference curve? Kind of looks like a happy face. It's the point in which you personally will get utility, maximize utility out, out of the consumption with your budget constraint of these two goods. And let's say that this rests at five books and five ice cream units. So on this indifference curve, on this happiness, with this particular budget constraint, you can consume five and five. So that's clear. And we're going to break this out. We're going to have a total effect equals income plus substitution. And here we're going to calculate what component is the substitution and what component is the income. Now we're doing this on a normal good. There's a difference between an inferior good and a normal good. This is the way the normal good acts. The inferior acts inversely. So the income effect, as we discussed, I rephrase it and reword it in different ways, is when you feel richer, your discretionary income increases resulting probably from, let's say, a price change. And the substitution effect is simply something is relative. So it's the relative change in consumption between, let's say, two goods based on the substitution effect. So substitution is relative, income is richer. And what we're going to do now is the price of ice cream drops. We're going to draw a new budget constraint. And the budget constraint is, we'll call it B2. And we are going to choose a new indifference curve. Let's say we're over here. Now, everybody's indifference curve, if you had a real sweet tooth, you can spend, you can blow all your money on this new price level. Let's say it's 24, 24 units of ice cream. But in a normal sense, we're going to consume a little bit more. And let's say this number is, for simplicity, 10. Maybe it's not proportional, but I think you understand. So we go from t 5 to 10 increase because there's a relative drop in the price of ice cream. So the total effect equals 5. 5. Some of its income, some of its substitution. And the question on the exam or the test might be, draw or differentiate between the two. It's going to be very easy. You have to draw a parallel line and you're going to find where it actually intersects. We can use a transparent straight edge. It might be easier. So we're going to be parallel to budget two the best we can. where it intersects with the initial indifference curve. We'll call it budget three. That's a hypothetical. Then that intersection point, let's say it's six, because as we have this shift, it's a parallel shift. You're going to see this intersection here, and it will go from five to six. That's substitution. Remember, substitution equals relative, the total effect the total change because of the relative price between books and ice cream. Where the income will be four. This residual amount is four. And that's the income effect because you're going from here to there. And again, budget three is a hypothetical budget line. This is your new budget line and this is your old budget line. And budget three is the parallel that intersects with the initial original indifference curve. You draw it down to the x-axis. You get your number. And if you're doing this on an exam, I don't know if the professor really even cares if these numbers are perfectly proportional. They just want to understand if you see the idea, understand the idea. And you have the total effect 
You do a simple subtraction, four plus one equals five, and that's the income effect. That's the substitution effect. You feel richer and you're gonna consume more of one good relative the other, to the other. Now, I know this is very abstract, but think of it this way. What if these were McDonald's hamburgers and Chick-fil-A? If Chick-fil-A has a crazy discounted sale, during a particular month, you may consume more Chick-fil-A nuggets than hamburgers. And so, you're not gonna consume the whole world. Neither your budget has that, nor do you want to. You're probably gonna consume more Chick-fil-A nuggets relative to McDonald's hamburgers. But with this extra money, you'll still have the ability to take the family out and enjoy a little bit more meals. So that is why your, your budget line shifts, why the indifferent curve moves over here, usually it moves down, and then you can carve out the pieces with this parallel line between substitution and income. So that's the income effect and the substitution effect. The income effect being, let's say, an outward shift in the demand curve in response to an increase in income or a decrease in price, or the reverse. And the substitution effect being, you have a simple model of two goods, consumer choice theory. You're gonna consume more of one and less of another when prices shift. There's gonna be a shift in demand and your budget constraint is gonna be altered. I hope you enjoyed this. Please subscribe. Thank you very much.